Hi, this is a Wang 300 series calculator console with a modern electronic package. These consoles are nothing more than a keyboard and display. To do anything, they need to be connected to an electronic package, which does the actual calculations. Electronic packages come up for sale occasionally on eBay, but they're expensive and they frequently need repair. So I built a modern version based on a microcontroller that closely emulates the behavior of the original Wang electronic package. If you have a 300 series console, but you don't have an original electronic package, this modern electronic package will bring your console to life. My modern package also adds a couple of features to your console. It can act as a self-setting Nixie clock, displaying the time, month, and date, and it has a feature for testing the keyboard. Let's walk through what it can do. We can do addition like 3 plus 4 plus equals 7, but look what happens when we do multiplication. 3, enter, 4 times equals. You notice that flickering? The original Wang calculators did that too, and I've reproduced their behavior. The Wang does not do multiplication and division directly. Instead, it takes the natural logarithms of the operands, adds or subtracts them, and then takes the anti-log. This was one of the big innovations of the Wang calculators, and it's described in their patents. The calculations are being done in the display register, and that's why you see the flickering. You're seeing the calculation in action. This modern electronic package does the exact same thing. It does calculations using the original Wang's logarithm method, and it does the calculation in the display register. Some 300 series consoles have trigonometry buttons. The way these work is that there's a board inside the console that basically implements a macro. It has a sequence of keystrokes programmed into it. So if I enter 45 degrees and hit sign, the console sends key presses to the electronic package to calculate the sign. By the way, this console uses degrees. Other consoles use radians. It all depends on the macro that was programmed into it. The Wang calculator supported a card reader that allowed you to make your own programs for the calculator. I have not tested my modern electronic package with a card reader. However, the card reader works the same way the trigonometry functions do. So I don't guarantee this, but I think my electronic package will work with a card reader. Here's a modern feature I've added. If you leave the calculator idle for five minutes, it enters clock mode. It shows the time, month, and date. It gets the time from GPS, and it automatically adjusts for daylight savings. At midnight, the clock exercises all the Nixie digits. This helps prevent cathode poisoning, which is a problem with Nixie tubes that can cause unused digits to stop working. There's one other feature. These keyboards are 50 years old, so sometimes their switches have become corroded and need to be replaced. You can enter a keyboard test mode by holding down a key for three seconds. Once you're in keyboard test mode, you can press any key, and if the key is working, its key code will appear in the display. You exit test mode by holding down the clear all key for three seconds. The rest of this video is going to get into some nitty-gritty details of how the Wang calculator works. Some people might not be interested in this level of detail, so I saved it for last. This is from a video I made a few years ago. Before I made this electronic package, I made a version that fit inside the console, and I described the things I learned about how the Wang did its calculations. Here it is. The Wang does not do multiplication and, di and division directly. Instead, it takes the natural logarithms of the operands, adds or subtracts them, and then takes the anti-log. This was one of the big innovations of the Wang calculators, and it's described in their patents. Let's start with the log of zero, which mathematically is undefined. But the Wang calculator thinks the log of zero is minus 41.269 blah blah blah. And I've reproduced that behavior. I'm not sure why the Wang has this particular value for the log of zero. It's not naturally produced by the algorithm it uses for taking a log. Maybe it's hard-coded. The patent doesn't talk about it. For my implementation, I hard-coded it. 
the anti-log of minus 41 is about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 18, which is a really small number. Wang is basically using that as an approximation of zero. The largest number you can enter into the Wang is nine nines. And if you multiply that by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 18, it's still a really small number. So any numbers you're likely to be using with the Wang uh, and multiplying by zero will still look on the display like they're zero. But if the Wang is only using an approximation for zero, what happens when you divide by zero? Let's try it. Clear all, one, enter, zero, divide equals, and you get a really big number. Well, it's dividing by the antilog of minus 41, meaning it's dividing by a very small number, and so the result is a pretty big number. And you'll notice that the overflow light is flashing. That means that the actual result is this number you see times 10 to the 10. To get into the configuration app, you hold down the enter key. To get back into the calculator app, you hold down the clear all key. To get into the keyboard app, the problem is whatever key I chose for getting into the app, that might be the key that's broken. So I made it so that holding down any key, except the aforementioned enter and clear all keys, brings you into the keyboard app. Here, every time you press a key, the key code appears on the display. You can test the uh, toggle switches too. Switch 1 is now in the off position. Switch 1 is in the on position. Switch 2 is off. Switch 3 is off. If you press a key and it doesn't change the code, that means that the key is broken. Fortunately, compatible switches are still available. You can buy them at places like DigiKey, but they're a lot cheaper on eBay. Once you've tested the keyboard, you can go back to the calculator app by holding down the clear all button. Let's talk about configuring the clock. As I said, the clock gets time from GPS satellites, but that only gives it the universal or Greenwich Mean Time. To configure your time zone and the daylight savings time rules, you go into the configuration app. There are nine different settings you can configure. This number here indicates which setting you're at. This shows the value of the setting. You can move through the different values for the setting with the plus and minus key and move on to the next setting with the enter key. So this setting, setting number one, is for 12 or 24 hour display. Then you have a choice of the display format, uh, hours, uh, month, and date, or just hours and minutes. This is the time zone. I, all 38 time zones uh, of the world are entered into here, and you can move through them. I'm on the east coast of the United States, so that's uh, universal time minus five hours, so I'll set it to that. Then there's the daylight saving time configuration. Uh, you can set it to zero, which means there is no daylight saving time. Uh, set it to one, which means daylight saving time is on and set it to 2, which means it automatically switches between daylight saving time and standard time based on the rules you enter in the next four options. This is the month that daylight savings time starts. I'm in the United States, so daylight savings time starts in the third month, March, second week of the month, and you can move through here, one, two, three, four, five means the last week of the month. And it's, uh, it assumes Sundays, and that's true in most places of the world. Then daylight savings time ends in the 11th month, first week. Now we go back to the calculator app by hitting clear all. So there you have it. It's a Nixie clock, and when it's time to balance my checkbook, I can switch it into calculator mode. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.